the five-step program for generating a loving, intimate relationship. This is Vivian Hart. And now, Module 4. Best Tips for Arguing Most Effectively with Your Mate Let me tell you about Melissa and Matthew. They were having a very difficult time in their relationship. Often, Matthew and Melissa criticized each other for their political beliefs. Because they belong to different political parties, their household discussions around politics and current events was always extremely stressful. They ended up screaming at each other, yelling at each other, accusing each other of being stupid, moronic, insensitive. They actually called each other these names. And when they would have these arguments, they would end up retreating to their own separate rooms, didn't want to talk to each other, didn't want to see each other. The conversation stopped, sometimes for several hours, sometimes for days they didn't talk. Obviously, this is not the right way to have an argument. But many people do have arguments in this way, and it ends up destroying their relationship. Couples who are most successful in their relationship have learned to argue effectively. And believe it or not, arguing in a caring fashion is a skill, and I'm going to teach you how. So the first thing to keep in mind is to speak up about what concerns you. This is as soon as you feel any negative emotion. You're angry about something. You're frustrated about something. You're afraid of something. Something isn't working right. Something is going to cost the household more. Anything like that, that you're concerned about, that you need to communicate to the other person that a change needs to be made. Generally, it's best not to start an argument when something is happening. It's better to ask for a time to talk when both of you are calm or to wait until both of you are in a good mood and then start the conversation up. What I'm going to teach you now is the confrontational I statement. It's very useful in arguments. It's confrontational only in that you are confronting the other person. You're not being confrontational. You are talking in a calm tone of voice. You're explaining the matter. You're trying to work towards an agreement that both of you feel good about. So there are four parts to the confrontational I statement. And by the way, it's called an I statement because you're not blaming the other person. What you're doing is describing an action that's taking place and then talking about yourself, the I why I am upset, why I feel this way, why it affects me, or it affects us as a family. So part one, what the other person is doing that you want to see changed. This is some kind of behavior they've done or words that they've used. So let's say you see that your partner leaves his clothes on the floor of your bedroom every night after he gets off work and uh, he changes into his casual clothes then and just leaves them on the floor. So you can say, when you leave your clothes on the floor after work to change into your casual clothes, what you're doing is you're describing an action. You're not blaming the person. Part two, how their behavior negatively affects you. So the second part of the confrontational I statement is, something that's happening to you personally or something that's happening to the family that is harmful in some way. So you can say, I could trip and fall when I come into the room and I have my arms full of folded clothes to put away and I can't see where I'm going. Or I could trip at night when I get up. And then part three are your emotions, some kind of unhappy negative emotion because of their behavior or their words. I'm afraid when I fall, I'm going to have a concussion or I'm going to hit my face and tear it open. I'm really afraid that I'm going to get really badly hurt tripping on your clothes. And then part four, exactly what you want the person to do instead. So what I'd like you to do is to put your clothes in the laundry hamper in the bathroom after you take them off after work. 
Now you always use parts one and four. You always say what they're doing now that you want to see changed and your request at the end, which is what you want them to do instead. And you always say either part two or three or both of them. Parts two and three are why you are asking for this change in behavior. So it's important to include that because just saying you're doing something wrong, I want you to change is not going to explain to them why it's so important to you that you're asking for it and how they're going to help you or help the family if they do change their behavior. Here's another example. When you spend all your time on the computer after work, we don't have a chance to talk and to share what's happened to us during the day. I get lonely and I feel that our relationship isn't as close as it used to be. So what I would like you to do is come home and talk to me for about an hour about how our days went before you go into the computer room. Here's another example. When you leave the porch light on all night, the electricity bill is higher. And that takes money out of our account that doesn't even need to be spent. So would you please turn the porch light off at night before you go to bed? Here's another one. When I'm interrupted, I don't get to finish what I'm saying, and I get frustrated that I can't say everything I need to say or that I want to say. So I would like you to be quiet so I can finish my sentence before you begin talking. Here are a couple points to keep in mind. First, make sure that the request is at the end of the I statement. Don't say, I want you to do this because blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. If you put it at the beginning before you've explained why you're making the request, the other person could very well not hear a single word that you said after the first sentence or phrase because they're thinking only about how to respond to you. But if you say, when you do such and such, and the reason why I want you to change such and such, they understand why first before you make the request. Second, be careful not to say what you believe they're thinking or feeling. Because if you do that, then what will happen is they can very well argue you're entirely wrong. And you know what? They will win that argument that you're wrong about what they're thinking and feeling. And the thing is that you don't know their thoughts and their feelings. You actually might be accurate but when it comes right down to it, they know their own thoughts and feelings better than anyone else. And you know your thoughts and feelings better than anyone else. So if they get sidetracked and they start an argument that, no, 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 you don't know what I'm thinking. You're totally wrong. You can't win that argument. And then you'll never even discuss what it is you brought up to begin with. That's why this is called a confrontational I statement. When you talk about the effect it has, you only talk about the effect it has on you or your family. You only talk about your own feelings or maybe the feelings of your children. You don't talk about how you think the other person thinks or feels because you know your own thoughts and feelings better than anyone else and they can't win that argument if they say, no, 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 you don't feel or think like that. You know your feelings better than anyone, so you will win that argument. And then you can go back and say, this is how I feel. I know myself better than you do. This is how I think about it. This is how I feel. This is the effect it's having on me. So therefore, I would like you to, in the future, I would like you to, I would prefer that you, and then make your request. So let's say you've made your confrontational I statement. What do you do after that? The first thing is to listen to your partner's point of view. Now, your partner may say, fine, I understand what you're saying. I'll do exactly what you request. I'll put my clothes in the basket. I'll be happy to do that. I'll turn off the porch light before I go to bed. Or, Yes, I understand what you're saying. I'll make sure I don't interrupt you in the future. And the person does exactly what you have requested. 
Other times, the person may act surprised or shocked or defensive when you present your I statement. And your partner may be unhappy to find out that you have this issue that you've brought up. So on these occasions, listen to what the other person has to say. Many times there are two sides to every story. So you need to listen to their point of view to understand them. And actually, they may see something that you didn't. They may say something like, Well, the reason why I leave the porch light on is because I want to make sure that the house is lit up. I don't want thieves coming in the night. And that would make logical sense. Another reason why you want to listen to their point of view is that it's going to be easier to figure out how to resolve the issue. Secondly, stay with the topic under discussion. Unless it's something that's important to clarify the issue being discussed, such as, well, you tripped yesterday on his clothes being on the floor, then don't bring it up because you don't want to add to any kind of negativity in the discussion. Don't talk about being hurt in the past, anything like that. Just stay with the topic that's under discussion. And remember, what you want to do is to resolve the issue with a win-win or a compromise, something that makes both of you feel good about the outcome. So you might come upon a compromise that says he'll put his clothes on the bed instead of on the floor, and that he'll put them in the basket before he goes to bed, or that you'll put him in the basket before you go to bed, or that instead of talking with each other for an hour after work, you'll talk with each other for a half an hour after work. Here are some no-nos. These are things you definitely do not want to do during an argument. First of all, no intimidation is allowed. And this can be the way you speak, your body language, trying to be aggressive to make sure the other person does exactly what you're telling them what to do. So you don't want your gestures to be strong. You don't want your voice to be mean. You don't want to scream. You don't want your eyes to be spitting out negativity. Instead, you want to talk as calmly as possible. Repeat how you see the situation if you need to. And make suggestions to resolve the issue that you think are reasonable and that are most likely to be accepted by your partner. Also, another kind of intimidation is, I'm going to leave you if you don't do it my way. Don't say that. Your goal is to work it out with the person in as calm and friendly a manner as possible. No put-downs. No name-calling. Don't say the other person is selfish or a loser or insecure or a slob. Don't say any of those names that put the other person down. If you do, you won't resolve the issue and saying these words can ruin the relationship. So just don't say them at all. And last, no abuse. No verbal abuse, no emotional abuse, no physical abuse. Now, if you're Arguments getting too heated, take a break. The best thing to do is to agree beforehand that if either one of you requests to leave the room and take a break, that you can take a little time to cool off. Now, this cooling off period could be 15 minutes, an hour, a day, however much you feel that you need. When you're in the heat of an argument and you're trying to make your point, and you're trying to get things to happen the way you want them to happen, and you're pushing, then your judgment can be clouded. And it's going to be more difficult for you to see the best option for resolving the issue. You only want to win the argument. So instead, it's better to take a break. If you feel you're going to say something you're going to later regret, also take a break. This doesn't mean you're walking away from the problem. What's best to do is to arrange a time to come back together to resolve the issue when both of you are calmed down and you're thinking clearly. Remember, your goal is to resolve the issue in a kind, calm, intelligent manner in a way that works for both of you. What I'd like you to do is download the PDF of the exercise for module four. 
And with this exercise, you're going to identify three situations that you would like to have your mate make a change in. Write down the situation and then create a confrontational I statement using the four parts and using them in that order. Now also remember parts two and three you need to use one or both of those so if it's only appropriate to use one of those parts that's fine. But say it in that order and then practice it. Practice it and practice it over and over and over again until you become very comfortable saying this and then have the discussion with your mate. With this module are two guided visualizations. The first is forgiving and loving another. So you'll be following my directions on forgiving your mate and replacing any negative feelings you may have with love. The second guided visualization is relaxing into the warm water. Now you're not actually going to be in warm water when you do the guided visualization. Most likely you'll be in your bed, but you'll be imagining relaxing into nice, warm, soothing water. And this is good any time before or after you've had a discussion of whatever the issue is you need to discuss. And the song I've included is Sunrise, Sunset. Somebody's sunrise is somebody's sunset too. Module 5 is Smart Strategies to Use when relationships don't work out. Until then, bye-bye.